the resurrection of Jesus Christ probably is the thing that, that, that sets Christianity apart because the other religions are saying they bring you a prophet, they bring you a sage, and they say uh, this is the way to find God. And so in that sense they're all the same. Christianity comes along and says this person is God and he was raised from the dead to prove it. And that just, it's just a different category. And uh, you have to come to grips with that in order to uh, be a Christian. And it also, it, it does force you in a way to, um, to, to grapple instead of just saying, oh, I like this religion because it kind of meets my needs or I like the thoughts. Because you have to say, did it happen or not? So I would still say the resurrection would be the place to go. Once you, once, at first you have to always have a caveat. You actually can't prove anything. You, you can't prove that you're not a butterfly dreaming you're a boy. Uh, that your cognitive faculties work. So at a certain point, there's no such thing as absolute proof for anything. But once you grant that, then you move into where we normally go with the, how do you know things are true. Uh, N.T. Wright wrote a book, The Resurrection of the Son of God, 890 pages, top flight historical, um, historian, historical research. What he basically shows in that book is not that you can prove anything from history, including the resurrection. He admits that. But what he tries to show you is all alternate explanations for the data are extremely even more difficult to believe. He says if you don't rule out, pre if you don't have the presupposition that miracles are impossible, he says if you don't start with a philosophical presupposition that miracles are impossible, then it's, it's very clear that the most likely explanation for hundreds of eyewitnesses going around being willing to die for what they so said they saw at one point, Jesus, 500 people said Jesus appeared to him at once, so that's not a hallucination. You don't have group hallucinations. We know the accounts are extremely old because Paul talks about them in his letters, and that's only 15 years after the events. So he goes through in a very methodical way, and when you're all done, you realize, boy, if you don't rule out miracles uh, you know, a priori, then it's a, there's a very, very powerful case. So I would suggest that maybe not at that level, you may not have to read any 190-page book, but there are other versions of that. Uh, that evidence that would be good to look at.